All right. Uh, I can accept this because our Zoom participants have made it. All right. All right. So last week uh, we watched. Um, what was it? Uh, the code debugging the the gender gap. I always forget the official name of the, the the movie. And then this week I asked you to read a memo from. Uh, Google employee, um, maybe to have maybe I don't know a counterpoint to to the movie, and I would like to um, have as much uh, discussion as we can about those topics, uh, but I want to add some information to help make the discussion a little bit more meaningful. Um, so I'm going to pull up a couple of documents here. So let me uh, share my screen. I'm going to start with this one. Oh. Okay. Try that again. Come on in. Uh, share the screen. And um, okay, fine. I had it open, but it crashed. Thank you. Zoom. All right. I think it's just no, it's this one, and then all right, there we go. Um, oh, there we go. There we go. All right. So. The first set of stats I'm going to do is from this report, Women in Technology, the facts. Um, and it's, as you can see, from 2016. Um, the next document I'm going to do is the update to this document from 2020. Um, so where numbers have changed in the past four years. Um, so if the, if you see something in here that contradicts the second document, it's because the second document is more up to date. If you see something in here that's not in the second document, you should assume that there hasn't been significant change uh, along those lines. Okay. Um, so uh, the first thing that we want to just um, C in general is uh, how many computing occupations are held by women in general. Um, and uh, you can see that, you know, roughly three quarters are men, one quarter women. And then the, the representation uh, um, gets especially small when you, when you look at um, Asian, African American, Latinx, and so forth. All right. Um, this uh, was highlighted in the video uh, as well that the number of computing occupations has been on the decline since about the 1990s. So um, it looked like there was becoming a parity 
between men and women. It looked like it was growing in that direction, and then uh, it dropped off uh, considerably after that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and this reflects the fact that the, of the same thing. If we were to do how many degrees in computer science, you would see the same sort of um, drop. Um, but that doesn't. Uh, that's not representative if you look at uh, technology or science disciplines as a whole, right? So if you look at, right, if you look at computer science and you look at uh, engineering, they've got these between 10 and 20 percent. But if you look at other fields like uh, physical sciences, so physics and chemistry, mathematics, you've got about 35, 40 percent, and if you do biology, you've got above 50, approaching 60 percent. So, um, so if you're thinking um, science-oriented uh, people, I know one of the things that the Google Doc talks about uh, is that you know somehow that women can't. Uh, or inherently have like a different way of, of thinking that's antithesis to computer science or in engineering fields. Um, the, this is meant to try to um, combat that argument because if that were the case, then why would these other fields have uh, more uh, higher representation of women in them? Because you would think the same things that would prevent women uh, in, in these um, fields uh, would, would be more universal across physics, chemistry, and biology as well. Um, so um, this is kind of an eye chart, um, but what um, I'll point out in here is that it's not uniform. The, the representation of women across technical fields is not this one static line down, down here. So if you pick something like um, here, which is computer and information research scientists, it's at 19%. Um, but if you pick something down here, uh, which is operations research analyst, it's at 51%. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the numbers in here, but the, the general um, uh, kind of attitude that is that if you were to ask people about some of these jobs and you didn't look at these numbers here and you said, do you think these are uh, a harder or more technical job? It's likely that the representation of women is lower. But if you say it's an easier or less technical, more um, more business or more social or more whatever, then the representation of women goes up. So um, it's not like there's just this uniform, all technology, all computer science jobs have low representation. Some fields do and some fields do not. Um, and so uh, that needs to also be taken into account. Um, one of the things that the, the movie, I don't know if it focused on, um, that, that is uh, kind of disturbing as well, is that if you look across certain disciplines, there's a high number of, of women who do not stay in the field. Um, and especially if you were to compare this to, to men. And then again, it's uneven. Uh, sci this would be computer science and IT um, in, the, in the technology occupations um, and you know, engineering tends to, to be lower um, and, and science is higher. But when you um, assess kind of like why they left, yes. Quit means that they left the, the field. So let me go to this next one because 
um, uh, I'll, I'll start to answer that question. Like, what does it mean? Why did they, why did they leave? There's, there's several things. So uh, if you look at it over time, so, you know, there, there are women who leave other fields for um, that maybe for reasons like um, they decided to have a family and they stayed home, the, their husband uh, did not. But if you look at those kind of reasons, um, that's more like this yellow line right, right here. That's all fields in, in um, other than technology. And there's a huge gap between that and, and this and, and technology fields right here. So it's, it's more than just um, that kind of, of an issue. In fact, most of them <clears throat> uh, leave the field uh, to go and work somewhere else. Uh, and you can, you can see that right here. These are the people who um, stop working in computer science altogether um, because they're working at a different company or they've, they stayed in the company, but they switched um, directions in the company. Maybe became a manager, maybe went to sales, maybe did something else, um, or they're just, not working at all. Um, so um, the the people who um, continue to use their field um, kind of become a self-employed or startup company um, rather than um, working in, in that field anymore because of I think the next slide I have talked about this. Yeah. Um, one is the the experiences that they they tend to have in in the workplace feels very uh, non welcoming. So if you want to take an example experience from the movie was um, the woman who worked for GitHub uh, and uh, feeling like it was not a a safe place for her um, and that the the men in that company didn't weren't understanding of her issue. Um, I shouldn't say her issue, her feelings. Um, the and and so <clears throat> um, that is one of the, the most common reasons that, that women leave is that they just um, are not treated in ways that they want to be treated, um, and so they'd rather leave and 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 go into uh, something else. When you're self-employed, when you're doing a startup, you have much more control over the of your workplace. Um, or when you go into a, a field that isn't so dominated by men, uh, you you have a different atmosphere in, in the workplace as a result. So they are willing to um, change be, because of these kind of experiences. Um, uh, <clears throat> The second one is not necessarily that they have been treated, um, you know, people have said sexist things or, or um, sexual harassment or, or these kinds of things, but they've just been kind of shoved off to the side as not being able to participate in the technology landscape when we're talking about technology jobs. That, um, People just assume that they're not as good or that they can't contribute to the same way um, or that they're less competent or, or something like that. And they, they know differently. They've gone through the same type of schooling. They've done these same experiences and they just uh, feel unappreciated, underappreciated for, for what they're bringing to the um, business. So uh, those are when you ask women why they leave and, and move into these different um, realms, those are the two most common reasons, um, greatly outnumbering uh, the, the other reasons that, that are, are given for, for leaving. Um, so, <clears throat> um, 
you can see that men and women oftentimes get slotted into these different kinds of positions here. Um, men, software engineer, um, management, applications developer, women, project manager, business analyst, technical recruiter, right? These are very different positions and they probably immediately bring to mind different types of, of people, different skill sets and, and everything. <clears throat> um, sometimes, and uh, this is weird to me, but sometimes people will say it's just that women are not, don't have ambition, they don't want to move up the corporate ladder, um, but that is clearly not the case. If you ask women um, if they want to be promoted or advance, you know, 85% of them say yes. And if you say all the way up to senior management, that's almost two thirds of them. It's uh, uh, so it's it's not for uh, lack of wanting to to move up the the corporate ladder that uh, the women that are leaving because they're not being given the opportunities. Um, <clears throat> So, boy, that's really green. Um, so, if you ask if they feel supported, right? We talked about they don't feel like they're they've they've had a good workplace experience. Um, that uh, only a quarter of women say yes. The company says that they support women, um, and I I sense it. I feel it. The company is is treating me the way I expect to be uh, treated. Um, where versus another third say, well, my company says that they treat men and women equally. The 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 verbiage is there, but when it actually comes to the actions, they don't meet what the the company says. Um, another fifteen plus percent say the company doesn't even pretend to um, support women equally with men. And I don't know um, where, what the unsure relates to, whether they said, I'm not, it's not clear, the company just isn't clear about what they support or their action, I'm not clear if their actions meet their word or not. So I don't know what that relates to. Um, but the key here is that only 25% feel supported by both the words and actions of the, the company and its management. Um, to kind of give you an idea of why women can feel underappreciated or, or uh, unwelcoming environment, uh, this study was done of a Fortune 500 company um, where they analyzed the annual reviews of the employers. And they looked at how many had uh, criticisms and how many had just um, positive remarks about them. And you can see that um, an overwhelming number of the women who were studied had only criticisms and, and very few were just um, glowing. Whereas the men, it was more of a mix. Oftentimes they would have a criticism um, in one part, uh, but there are lots of times when they didn't. Um, and so it just uh, felt, you know, like there's, there's not the same standard being applied to the, the men and the women in the organization. So this is just an example of how they, they might feel this way. Um, <clears throat> And then when you look at the types of criticisms that the men receive, um, it's largely constructive feedback. Um, you know, Joe um, is really uh, energetic. He just needs to direct it in, in this way, right? So the critique is he's not quite doing the right thing, but here's how he, he can make it better. Um, whereas the opposite, um, it, with women, the feedback is just focused on negative. So things like um, she's um, 
angry or doesn't you know aggressive or uh, too assertive or, or whatever, um, and the amount of constructive feedback is is much less. So um, that's this is meant to be an example and not exhaustive across the industry, but you can see why it might um, be seen that way. Um, and a significant reason for cited uh, for a bad workplace experience is these kinds of extreme job pressures that um, women experience in, these are software engineering and technology companies um, for the purple and then blue is averaged over all different companies. Um, and this is um, uh, what they, they sense. More of them feel like they have to work long hours. More of them feel like they have to work 24 seven. More of them feel like they have to work with um, groups in multiple time zones. I wonder how much that will change in the advent of remote work and, and so forth. We can see that's a huge disparity between software and engineering uh, versus um, the industry at large. And at the same time, feeling this extreme pressure to be present physically in that um, um, doing something over uh, FaceTime, Zoom, Google Meet, whatever the case is, wasn't seen as um, acceptable. This was 2008, all right? Um, and if you couple that with um, the fact that um, in general, if you have uh, women who are um, in a family situation, uh, they tend to have the responsibilities at home with children. Um, and so you can see here, um, women are very likely to have a partner who works full time compared to men. Right. Um, and the men tend that, uh, you know, half of them, their partner is responsible for the children, whereas only 10% of the women partner. So that means that, you know, most of that is taken up by the women. And then you put in these characteristics where they feel like they have to work more, have to be available all the time, um, and be available at any time because you're working with people across multiple time zones. Uh, it becomes a, um, just a situation that a lot of women don't want to put these two things together. Um, it's very stressful to, if, if you are responsible for the kids, to have to then also be working at, with, with these kind of um, expectations on you. So pick a different industry that doesn't have those expectations. Right? That's what ends up choice being made. All right. Um, but if you ask different questions, you tend to see the same type of answers of women and men on, on how they um, prioritize families. So here on the left um, is, these, these are perceptions. So if you think someone um, is um, family oriented, okay? So like, excuse me, if you think someone is family oriented, this is the percentage of people who say that's very or extremely true of successful people. So um, both men and women basically say, if you want to be successful in technology, 
you cannot be family oriented. That is the perception, okay? I'm not saying that's reality, but that's what most people feel like, that you have to sacrifice your family if you wanna be successful. All right, so, um, but then if you ask them if they feel like they're family oriented, basically you get a very similar response from men and women. So somehow there's this disconnect, maybe I guess they don't want to be or don't see themselves as successful, right? Most men, most women want to be family oriented, but don't see how that connects with being successful in technology. All right. So there's the this family orientation somehow um, provides that disconnect. <clears throat> right, and you can ask a bunch of different questions. Do you want to be a good parent? Do you want to have a successful marriage? Um, and you get really high numbers for that across men and women, right? There isn't this, this sense that men want to this more or less than, than women. You get the same type of responses across the, the board. And being successful shows up as being much lower in priority for both men and, and women. Okay, so that it's not that somehow women are more family oriented and so that's why they're dropping out, okay? There's, that that's, doesn't seem to be reflected in, oh no, that's not what I wanted, whatever. Oh uh, no. Okay, so apparently I'm gonna to have to restart this in 10 minutes. Sorry, uh, Ariel and Jeremiah. All right, so that doesn't tell the full story, right? That somehow men are more um, driven towards success and women are driven more towards, towards family um, in, in general. All right. <clears throat> um, But uh, it is true that um, women who are in technical fields, so that's the red, tend to be um, partners with other technical people, right? Two thirds to three quarters of them have a partner in the field. Whereas if you look at the men, it's more like one third uh, to two fifths, all right? so. There, if, if you compare the family expectations, it's not the same because they both in, in these families, both of them are feeling these kind of pressures right here, right? Because they're both, they tend to both be working under those same requirements. But in these, not, not as much. All right, I'm gonna skip over that for right now. All right. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I just uh, cancel. There you go. All right. There you go. So let's go to this real quickly here. So what are your what are even application anchors? All right. All right. Uh, no, this this is not the right thing. I clicked on the wrong button. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's interesting. Fine. Yeah, I can do that. 
So this is what I want. Download this. All right. All right. All right. I'm not going to go through um, everything here, um, but you can see that we've got more data. So since this was produced in 2020, we've got data all the way through the 2018-2019 school year. So you can see that the number of bachelor's degrees in computer scientists slowly started to rise. We're we're now on you know almost 25 percent. I don't know if that's a success um, at 25 percent, but it's good to see the the numbers rising. Um, and you can see how that those numbers play out on a year by year basis. And you can see that there's significant growth across the discipline. Okay. So one of the common pieces of feedback I get when I try to talk about this issue with people is that somehow I'm advocating to replace um, positions in technology for men with women. And uh, I want this slide to show that the, the growth in men is um, and should continue to increase. I'm not advocating a replacement of men. I'm advocating for in a strict increase in women in technology. There, there are so much need in, in our fields that it's not a zero sum game. And I don't want it to be seen as such. In other words, I want to, um, not only do I want to see the blue bars continue to increase, but I just want to see this green bar continue to increase significantly as well. So we just have a really much larger total number of, of people in our discipline. Okay, so uh, hear me very clearly say that I am not trying to replace men with men, women. I am simply trying to increase the total number of women in our field. Um, and you can see that uh, that growth in, in women's um, bachelor's degree has especially been prominent in um, women of color um, and um, non-resident women. So um, people from India, China um, would probably be the two largest groups in this graph, but, it, um, but it, across the board, the, the growth is, is, is quite nice. 159% for white women, 323% for women of color, and 544% for non-resident women. The green bars represent um, the growth in all um, degrees, um, where it's 86 here, it's 6 here, and 58% here. So you can see that um, the growth in computer science is much outpacing the growth in, in college degrees in general for women. All right. Um, you can see that in general, there's a more diverse set of um, racial backgrounds in women than there are men, right? Men, it's 52% white. Um, 15% Asian, and then 9% uh, or 10% uh, Latinx versus women's 39%, 22%, and so forth. So there's a there's a 
um, <clears throat> different mix in, involved here as well. Um, what you don't tend to see yet um, is a lot of growth for women teachers. And a lot of people would, I think, rightly uh, argue that until you have women um, represented in the teaching and acting as mentors and as role models and as um, people to look up to and aspire, that it's going to be hard for significant growth to take place. The cool part of that is that you see this line has started to increase, uh, which is um, the lowest level of the teaching. So that's that's increasing, but the other haven't in started increasing, I don't think, uh, at this level yet. Um, yeah, so the number employed in computing and mathematical operations hasn't really increased all that much, 26% versus 57% of the total workforce. Not total workforce, professional occupation. Um, again, you still are starting, well, you don't see much increase in computer programming or computer software engineers. It looks like computer hardware engineers